Your home is under contract. Congratulations. Now what? There are multiple steps that are going to have to take place in order for us to have a successful close of escrow. So let's walk through those steps so that you have a roadmap and an understanding of what to expect going forward. So once your home goes under contract, you have a fully executed agreement, meaning both the seller and the buyers have signed it. The buyer's agent will send that fully executed agreement, your residential purchase agreement, to the escrow and title company that they chose and wrote into the agreement because the buyer gets to select the title and escrow company and they will request that escrow be opened. If there's a lender, a lender's copied on it, the agents, the agent's assistants and transaction coordinators are copied on it. There is a team of people that now know this property has gone under contract. We need escrow to be opened for a whole host of reasons. Next step is your earnest money. So a buyer typically has two days, it is spelled out in the contract, the amount of time, to wire the earnest money to escrow. Your earnest money was determined with your realtor prior to the home going under contract, and most buyers will offer the amount of earnest money that's being requested. So that amount of money has to be sent within the specified time in the contract. While we're waiting for the earnest money to be sent and title has to get the buyers the uh, wiring instructions. So they need an escrow number. So this takes time. If escrow, if it was sent to escrow in the evening, typically you can expect by say like 11 a.m. the next day, we will have wiring instructions out. Not we, the, the title company is very specific. Wire fraud is real. So earnest money. The next step is almost all at the same time a preliminary title report is being repaired on the property. And what the title company is looking for is can they ensure and provide clean and marketable title to that property upon a transfer to the new buyer. So we want to make sure there are no liens on that property. Say there was some construction done and the contractor says they weren't paid. They leaned the property. Anything like that needs to be removed. In older jurisdictions, like not like in Las Vegas, um, the land has gone through so many different owners that sometimes somebody might be on there that shouldn't be on there and that has to be corrected in order for the title company to be able to pass clean and marketable title and insure it. The same time, the sellers are ordering an HOA resale package most of the time in Nevada because we have so many um, common interest communities that we have rules about how we're allowed to live in these homes, what we're allowed to do with them. Nobody can paint the house purple, pink, that sort of thing. Park multiple cars out front, depending on your neighborhood. So the resale package is being ordered at the same time to provide to the buyer. So preliminary title report, HOL resale package, and a demand. And a demand is property specific as well. The title company needs it to make sure that the seller is current on all of their HOA dues and doesn't have any fines because all of that is going to be brought current in order for the property to transfer. At the same time, the buyer is lining up their home inspection during their diligence period. So there is a due diligence period in your contract and in Clark County, these range from seven to 14 days. Seven is really fast, 14 is on the long end, 10 is kind of normal. This is the period of time in which a buyer can back out of this transaction for any reason whatsoever. It doesn't have to be about the home inspection or the quality of your home. They could simply change their mind. They found another house, they want the other house. They can back out during this period of time and get their earnest money back. This is also the period of time in which uh, any request for repairs is being negotiated. So the buyers schedule a home inspection. We coordinate the time with you, the seller, and make sure it works. And you can be present for the home inspection, but we typically recommend that you are not present for the home inspection. And we certainly do not want you there when the buyer's agent and the buyers are there going over the home inspection results with the inspector. That is a time to leave, let them have that conversation. This is a property that they're buying and then 
you can come back in. I, I really recommend my, cl my clients just don't be there. And most home inspections last three hours. They can last longer depending on the size of the property. Uh, I think we had three home inspectors at a like a 9,000 square foot property, but it was still three hours. So they just brought in extra support to get through it. Then that home inspector is gonna turn a report around and, in about 24 hours. And it's gonna have a lot more detail in it than what they showed the buyers. But hopefully what they did was they went over any big ticket items with them at the property and then the rest are little. It is a home inspector's job to find things wrong with your property. This is why they are hired. So I tell my clients, do not take it personally. I get a home inspection every couple of years on my home and they will mark things off like a knob or a drawer pool is loose to, hey, maybe you have pool equipment leak. So something that is so ridiculous, you could just fix it with a screwdriver to pool equipment link and, and that sort of thing. So this isn't personal and you just need to make sure that you don't take it that way um, because it's just not worth your time. So home inspection report. Then let's say they submit a request for repairs and I would say 80 to 90% of the time they will submit a request for repairs even in a new home because new homes aren't perfect either. So say it's a year old, it, there's something wrong with the home because homes take maintenance. So they submit a request for repair and it's all within that due diligence period that we talked about, seven to 14 days, but whatever was specified in your contract. Then you have to respond or not. You could not respond, but in essence, if they really wanted it repaired, then they will just cancel the agreement. So you can either agree to fix it, at which point you need to use a licensed, bonded, and insured contractor um, for plumbing, electrician type stuff. Um, you can't say I've got a great handyman who can do all of that. That time has passed. Now they have to have a licensed, bonded, insured repairman fixing it and have a receipt showing who did it and that the work was done. You can say, I'm not fixing everything, but I'll fix this one thing or two things or three things. Or you can say, we're so busy getting out of this house that we're just gonna offer you a credit upon a successful close. So you will get some money from us and you deal with it yourself. So those are, those are your options and we need to resolve all of that within that due diligence period to keep moving forward. So then the next step is, okay, preliminary title report comes back. All the parties are looking at it. If it doesn't look like there's a problem, great. If it does, then title's working through cleaning that up. Then you've got your HOA resale package. You've ordered it, it's come in. Once we send it to the buyer, the buyer has in Las Vegas, in Clark County, five days to back out of the transaction for anything within that resale package. So they could say, and the resale package will show your CCNR, so um, the covenants, conditions, and restrictions for living in that neighborhood. It will show any current and pending litigation that the neighborhood might be having. It'll have a financial statement and it will have insurance information. So you might say, well, you only have $100,000 in the account, but I see that you've planned to do like a million dollars in road construction or repair, and I'm completely making this up. So are you gonna have the homeowners come out of pocket for that? These are just some examples, which, and that would be extraordinarily rare, but you really, as the buyer, you need to be reviewing that information. And then um, you could see, oh, this neighborhood has litigation going on, and I don't think I wanna be a part of that. Whatever it is, the buyer can determine, do they wanna move forward or not? And they can back out and get their earnest money back. So I have my sellers get those resale packages ordered immediately because it's another out for the buyer and I wanna give my sellers peace of mind that they can like move on with their lives and get the movers over there and that sort of thing. If you have a finance deal, then you are going to have an appraisal and an appraiser is gonna call schedule to come out and they're gonna go in the house as well. Take pictures just like the home inspector, but the appraisal pictures are more like real estate pictures, size of the room, quality of the home, the material on the countertops, any upgrades. And I will always step in and provide a list of upgrades that have been done recently by my clients and the cost of those upgrades, as well as any comps in the neighborhood that I think are comparable or to show, hey, my client did a $200,000 remodel two years ago. Here is all of the data for that. And the comps are original homes. They have never been updated. Therefore, that's why we believe this home is worth more. We've got the data to support it. So. Um, 
I just, you know, have that quick conversation and give it to the appraiser and then I get out of the way and leave. Next is waiting for that appraisal to come back. And so typical appraisers take about five days to turn a report around. And there is a window of time of which they, we have to do this. So it's in the contract. So you've got all these different windows of time. Earnest money, typically two days. Due diligence, seven to 14, typically 10. Next thing is the appraisal contingency. The appraisal contingency, it very much varies, but say 15 to 21 days. And you can be really confident, no, we know the house is priced right, or in this transitioning, shifting market, maybe you're not so confident. So you just don't know if it's gonna appraise. What if it doesn't appraise? Within that window of time, you can reach an agreement, say, um, you say, okay, well, seller, I'm gonna come down in price, or buyer, I'm gonna come down a little bit, but I just, don't agree with the appraisal and I think you see all the value in our home too so why don't we um, you put in some and I'll come down some you need to reach an agreement if you can't reach an agreement then the buyer will cancel because the loan won't be approved so it's done next step is you get over that hurdle and you have a loan contingency this is final 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 approval for the buyers to get through the final approval for the loan and that is typically 21 to 25 days. Now, all of these timelines can be extended, um, but both parties have to agree. And I always tell my buyers when I have the listing, please be realistic in everything that you request because we don't like to provide extensions. It makes us nervous. The home is under contract, which means it's probably not getting as many showings anymore. The holidays are coming when things slow down. Like it's not fair to us that you put in numbers that just weren't realistic. And we're all human and things happen and sometimes people need extensions, but I prefer that we just don't do that, that we um, have expectations upfront of how long things are gonna take. So another way to know that, to, feel, like, to have some confidence in that loan contingency is that when your agent, me, gets the pre-approval or proof of funds with an offer, this is the, the way the buyer's agent can show that their client can qualify for the loan, is either we have proof of funds, I talk to the private banker, yes, there's plenty of cash, that's great. And most cash offers won't have an appraisal, but it is their right to request an appraisal. So just because you have a cash offer doesn't mean you're not gonna get an appraisal. Um, and then with the lending, you call the lender and you ask the questions like, what kind of credit score are we looking at? What are their ratios? Like, is this home a big stretch for them? Um, what kind of job are they in? Is it an industry that is volatile and they could lose their job mid-transaction? All of these things and you're judging the strength of the buyer. So that will that's a conversation that i have with my sellers and then when they if they choose to accept the offer they understand the risks associated with that specific buyer if there are any or they understand this is a super solid buyer let's get this done so now we're coming up on closing day and there's going to be a final walkthrough on your property where everybody comes back in again Property should be vacant at this point and in broom swept condition the contract will specify how many days ahead of closing this walkthrough will occur. Typically it's one to three days before. If repairs were made on your property, there may be an additional walkthrough earlier to make sure the repairs were done, everybody approves. If that's the case, you still have a final walkthrough because what the buyer is looking at is, are all the major systems still working? The house is there, there hasn't been a fire, there hasn't been a flood. Like, the quality of the home is what they believe it to be. Nothing has changed substantially. And on the move out, the movers didn't like run into the walls or damage something, that sort of thing. Home should be left in broom swept condition, but I tell my sellers, I don't even have to tell my sellers, my sellers know they have the houses professionally cleaned. It's just a nice thing to do, but it is not required by contract. Then, closing day so we're past that hurdle and every hurdle is a way for the buyers to get their earnest money back and so it's just it gets we call it the money's going hard and so as it gets closer and closer like over the appraisal um deadline and these were really strong buyers now we're to a point where this earnest money is basically non-refundable and 
unless the loan is not approved, in which case they can get it back. They've got their loan denial letter from their lender and it is what it is. The earnest money though is supposed to be um, like consolation for taking your home off the market for that period of time. So that's the reason why at some point it does become non-refundable to a buyer. Then you have closing day. So we have worked through all of these contingencies, all of these deadlines, a myriad of documents, there's so much paperwork, and it's time to sign. Depending on if it's a cash transaction, and then a the whole variety of things, we can send mobile notaries out to our clients, which most of my clients are um, the doctors, lawyers, busy executives, and they really do not have time to drive and go to title for an hour to sign. So most of the time, or they're out of town. I have a lot of clients that are out of town. So we um, coordinate with the title company and for a small fee, I think it's $100 or $150, a mobile notary is sent to you to sign. If you wanna go to title uh, for my clients, I join them. Not that they, they very much understand the documents they're signing, but I just like to be there. And one of the documents that uh, we'll review beforehand is a settlement statement. And it's a draft. That settlement statement shows all of the credits and debits in this transaction and how much the buyer will be paying, how much the seller will be netting. And they're very detailed. It will have things like all of your prorations. So your HOA fees, your sewer, your trash, um, your property taxes, they are all prorated so that the seller stops paying them on the day to closing and the buyer picks up on the following day. It will have your commissions paid to your realtors, it will have your title and escrow fees, any mobile notary fees, all of it. Taxes if I didn't already say that. So it's very detailed. We review that a couple of days before closing. We have a final settlement statement when we're there and then you're just signing a stack of documents about this thick. Some of my clients wanna see the documents ahead of time. Some of them have bought and sold 10, 20 properties. They're very used to them and the title company is very thorough and so is the mobile notary in reviewing all those documents at length and going over them. And for the buyers, obviously they're signing um, all of the, the loan agreements and that sort of thing. After all of the documents are signed, title will be sending everything over to the lender and to the county recorder to record. So. They will request that the agent say, are we, are we ready to release to record? We say, yes, everybody's in agreement, nothing else has changed, please release to record. And then we wait. We wait for the county recorder to get it done. And it depends, like at the end of the month, the county recorder is really busy because a lot of deals close at month end for a variety of reasons. And so there's no way of knowing what time of day it will close. I will say I've never not had a property record the same day, but I have heard of some moving to the following day, which is why I won't let my clients schedule closings on Fridays. We like to do a Wednesday or a Thursday close to give us time to correct anything that could go sideways, make up for it, and still get it done the same week. And then the question that all my sellers ask is, when will we get our money, our funds? Typically that happens the same day, but the title companies have as long as it takes to get those funds to you. And depending on when we record, it could be the following day. But pursuant to the purchase agreement, the transfer of possession to the buyer occurs upon the close. So once we get the um, time stamped deed from the county showing this property is now owned by the buyers, they get the keys. So if we have our sellers leave their keys, the remotes, the number of the mailbox, any other information that they wanna leave behind, typically in a kitchen drawer, and then a key will transfer from one agent to another, and the buyers are able to enjoy their new home, and that's your sale. That's what happens when a house goes under contract and then getting it to close. Typical escrow is around 30 days, but some can be 45, and some cash deals can be 10. It's just whatever the parties can agree to get done. So if you have any questions during this process, please reach out. I'm happy to help. And I hope this video gave you just a good idea of what to expect as we move forward.